Kenneth, Kenneth Shaw from uh, Arizona State University, which is, which is the, I guess, the local school in Phoenix, so it should be, for me, 20 minutes from home to here to give the talk. But, well, I guess, for me, welcome everyone coming to Phoenix. Um, my talk is on something also different. It's also in, in the, well, it's, I guess, not really in finance, but more in the insurance side, again. And then we're talking about life insurance. Okay, so you see in the title, it says, uh, mortality and longevity, capital risk management. Okay, and then by capital risk management, I mean talking about uh, money saving aside, how can we save more money, how can we not uh, not to ha have to save too much, too much money for some risk. Okay, and the risk here is mortality and longevity risk. Longevity being living longer than expected, mortality being dying quicker than we expected. For example, having COVID pandemic happen in the past, that's definitely a mortality risk. And then, uh, well, to link this to the, to, the, to the theme or to the topic of this uh, session, it's on simulation. So we're gonna actually study, we'll look at a problem in this, in this uh, risk management exercise that is actually require simulation exercise. And then we'll see that it's very, very complicated. Well, I guess to a certain extent, it's a complicated simulation exercise. And then we need to address this, uh, this uh, simulation problem. And then the way to address it is using a surrogate model, which is more approximation machine learning like uh, uh, exercise. All right, let me uh, quickly introduce what this uh, capital requirement is. Yeah. For, for uh, well, in, the, in, the, in the insurance industry, or for example, life insurers, they're required by regulators to set aside some money for all their life lives. For example, they issue you a life, a life insurance product, then they have to set aside some money, okay, to prevent future changes in this life lives. And these changes could be coming from either the mortality, uh, coming from mortality, for example, like COVID changes. Okay, we have to expect future, in the future there could be COVID, and then the liability under, uh, well, yeah, the cash flow, the liability under this product could change dramatically. If you die, a lot more needs to be paid out. So the regulator, insurance regulator, requires uh, life insurance to actually set aside some money for these uh, events. And there are basically, well, there are multiple regulations that is on this, and then the two examples, or the well known ones, one in the US by the NAIC, and the other one is from the EU, uh, regulated by something called the Solvency uh, Two requirements, and then uh, let me uh, use Solvency Two and give you a more mathematical definition for this. It's basically saying that the Solvency Two in the EU is required for all life insurers, a life insurer, to set aside a money that is equal to the 99.5 value risk, which is basically 95.5 uh, percentile of the changes of the underlying liability from one time point to the another. Okay, so today we expect that future we're gonna pay $10. And then what happens a, day, uh, a year later? Okay, I wanna know that the difference between these two values, we have enough money set aside to cover this difference. And then the, the enough, by enough, is basically saying that 99.5 of the chance it should be enough. That's basically what a regulator asks us, or well, asks the life insurer to do, okay? And that is the general definition. To put this into a more, a slightly more mathematical term, under a, a internal model approach, the life insurer is allowed to actually use some, some internal model to actually estimate how much this liability is actually paid. Okay? And the best way to, well, the, the best estimator, the best way to estimate this is basically calculating the expected value, where, which is what I have in there, the expected value of those, that apple, which is the liability, given the information up to the most recent time points. Okay? If it's given at time zero, then it's the, our best estimate of future liability at time zero. And then it's given a F, a filtration one or F1, means that if it's given the information tomorrow, then it's our best estimated at, at the time tomorrow. Okay? And we calculate the difference between these two. Well, today is set, but tomorrow is on, on uh, the random variables. So we're trying to calculate the difference between these two, and then we're trying to find out the 99.5 percentile of this difference, and then that will be the money to set up. Okay? And that's what we require by the, by the regulators, but the insurance company, of course, does not want to do this. They, want to, they don't want to set money aside and put it in the saving account so that they can just not generate enough money for that. So of course they want to reduce this amount. They want to save less, okay, or set aside less money. And the way, one way to do this is what the second bullet point trying to say that, well, we can implement a hatch. By implementing a hatch, meaning that we can add some financial instruments into this liability portfolio so that those values can be reduced, okay, so that we can have like some hedging effect or some diversified effects to reduce that value itself. And that's what we have here that we're subtracting. When it's not the mean the liability itself, we start to subtract some other hatching instruments uh, against those liabilities so that these uh, value errors can be reduced. And then there is a U amount that U is the, the number of the hatching instruments that we actually need to purchase. 
and then after in the hatching exercise, we're gonna find, where the, ex the job is to find out what that u value should be. What is the optimal value of u so that that value, the SC, SCR can be reduced. And there has been a number of studies on this. And that is what has been done in the past. Well, what we're trying to do here is not only focusing on that, which is what, how can we reduce the today's amount that's required by regulators, okay? We're also focusing on what happens in the future because the regulations does not change. The regulators require you to put, us, put money aside today. You will also require you to put money aside tomorrow, okay? But tomorrow to you is a random amount, okay? You don't know how much you have to set aside tomorrow. So that's why we're not only looking at SCR at time zero, now I'm changing that to time one, okay? So I also, also, I also want to know or focus on how much would a regulator require the life insurer one day from today, okay? And that's a future added data in the sense. And this also relates to the underlying risk. For example, uh, for, for a new provider, this value will be higher if the mortality is lower than expected. So if people are living longer, then there will be more liabilities, therefore more money needs to be set aside by the regulator tomorrow in the future. Similarly, with the second bullet point saying that for life insurers, well, if a COVID happens again or another pandemic has to, happens again, there will be more deaths happening, coming out and then there will be more uh, insurance payments made out, therefore the regulator will require life insurers to put more money aside. Okay, again, more money coming out, uh, putting aside something not, something not desired by the life insurers. Therefore, there was always the question of how can we reduce or mitigate this uncertainty. And then one way is doing the same thing. Okay? We also can, uh, can add a, life, uh, a security to our liability so that not only today's SCR, today's required amount is reduced, but also the future amount is also reduced. Now, of course, when talking about future amounts, this is a random variable. We cannot just reduce the value itself. We, could, we should focus on certain statistical quantities of, of, of these future amounts, either the mean value or maybe the variance of the future values or maybe other some body at risk of the future values. How can we reduce those? Now, a problem with this now is where the simulation problem comes in is the second bullet point saying that. Well, now, because we're sitting at today, looking at the future, looking at how we can manage this amount in the future, and that future amount also depends on the future afterwards, right? because that's our future amount that we need to set aside for even future liabilities. And in this case, we'll end up with a multiple layers of uh, future scenarios. That's what I'm trying to describe in these three bullet points there, saying that we're currently from time zero, we have to move from time zero to time one, and then at time one, we also look at the difference between the next time points, so we have to move from time one to time two, and then from time two further into the end of all the liabilities. So these end up being becoming a multiple layer simulation problem that's more complicated to solve. All right, uh, of course, underlying this, there are more models to help us uh, well, there, are, there is a stochastic mortality model to help us generate the future, and there's also a security that is designed on or developed on, on top of that model. But I'm going to skip all these, just let you know that we have a way to simulate the future using a certain model, and there is a security, a security that is designed on top of that model. Here, I want to remind you what we're trying to do here. We have two objectives. Number one is to uh, reduce our current uh, capital requirements, okay, and then number two, we're trying to reduce a certain risk measure of the future capital requirements. We are trying to achieve both of these in this uh, single uh, hedging exercise. All right, um, oh yeah, talking about simulation. Now, we talked about that there are multiple layers of simulation that's going on at the same time. Okay? And then there are multiple, uh, well, there have been many studies trying to help us to reduce the, the requirements or the computational uh, requirements for this uh, simulation exercise. There are a number of people did different works. For example, I list a few from, I group these into three different categories. So some was meta simulation, some use the neural, like neural network simulations, and some others use least square simulation. What we're trying to do in this one is actually following a method, well, the co-author of this paper is named from, a young, Alex Young from the University of Toronto. They actually proposed a surrogate modeling approach to help us better simulate or reduce the computational burden in this uh, simulation uh, problem. Um, trying to quickly introduce, or well, quickly describe what this model is trying to do is basically trying to find out a, another function that we can quickly calculate to better approximate the, um, the future values. The future values is very hard to calcu calculate, requires a lot of simulations, and why not we just find another model that we can replace or help us to approximate the actual values. Now, of course, the, the model we're trying to approximate which needs to be estimated, then we can use a, a small number of samples that we strenuously simulated to train our model, to train our surrogate model to help us better predict the actual values we actually want. 
the actual future uh, uh, SCRs, the actual future solvency capital requirements. So that was the idea or the, 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 the methodology behind the circuit modeling. And then to apply to our problem more specifically, we're trying to calculate SCR, which is uh, the solvency capital requirement, it depends on a number, a number of different things. It depends on the future mortality scenarios, it depends on the future time points. It also depends on how many units of that hatching instrument we actually purchase. All of these need to be approximated, so here we're actually using a simple uh, spline model to help us approximate that required amount in the future. Not today, but in the future. And then we're gonna use a, a clustering uh, uh, algorithm to help us to sample, uh, sample out a small section that we can use to train that uh, simply spline uh, regression so that we can better approximate the value we actually need in the future. All right, so now I can show you some numerical results, okay? Here we're gonna assume that there are two types of life insurers, one providing annuity values, annuities to our customers, and the other one providing life insurance. And then we also have a reminder that we have the two objectives. One, we want to reduce today's SCR, okay, making sure that the insurer can actually need to save less today, and also the insurer can also save less in the future, so that actually they have more profit uh, uh, margins, I guess. And then uh, for the second objective, also because it's a random variable in the future, well, we're going to look at two quantities. One is the mean of the future SCR, and the other one is the value of, it, of the future SCR. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Two type of insurers: one annuity and the other one life insurance providers. But here, let me show you some numerical results. These are two lines showing that well, when, when the life insurance purchase different units of that hedging instruments, that, that, that financial product, how is the SCR reduced? Okay, so we can see that well, there's a, a clear minimum point over there saying that if you purchase that many of the hedging instruments, then your SCR, your requirement amount required by the regulator can be reduced, okay, showing the hedging. And this is all happening at time zero. Okay, this is what people have done in the past. What we're trying to do is doing the future values um, well, this graph is showing that our model is doing a good approximation. Okay, the surrogate model is approximating the true values quite well. The margin of errors are both are about three percent. Okay, so doing a good job. And then here is showing that well, in the future we can actually reduce that amount as well. Okay, so not only reducing today's required amount, but also reducing how much is required in the future. And this is measuring by the mean. So the mean future, the future mean value is reduced. And this one is showing that the mean future value at risk is also reduced. Okay, so the uncertainty of the future can also be reduced when the life insurer and the annuity purchase a certain amount of the, the hedging instruments. All right, and thank you all. Yeah, there's a, a, a numerical table showing you the results. We can actually find out the optimal hedging units using that quick simulation surgery model to help us figure out, figure out the optimal amount. And here is the conclusion for that. I'll let you read this and end this because I know that we're running out of time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.